Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today we need to harvest some of these herbs because we want to avoid a lot of issues. So let's go get them harvest. Okay guys, so there are a couple things going on with my herbs. The herbs are starting to flower, which some of them I am letting go to flower. And then some of them are starting to get attacked by white flies. <laughs> so if you guys have been following my channel for a while, you know that I grow an organic garden here in the desert, meaning I don't use anything. I don't even use organic um, like pesticides or anything like that or sprays or neem oils in my garden. I try to go with the flow of my garden and the life cycle of the plants. So when I see a plant start to get things like insects like white flies or aphids or caterpillar loopers or any of those things, I harvest the plants because I go by the rule that if I don't eat it, something else will. And when your garden is trying to, when your garden's starting to attract bugs and you'll see certain plants will attract bugs while others don't, it's because the plant is giving off a signal for the bug to come attack it. <laughs> now, some of my plants we'll see are not being attacked by anything and some of them are because the plant wants to go to seed and it's too bushy. So let's go up to my herb bed. We are going to do a big harvest of the herbs because I want to get some herbs dried. All right, guys, we are also racing against the sun. So, cause I don't like to pick plants um, when the sun is beaming down on them. So we're going to start up front here where my kitchen herb bed is. And then we're going to move out to the back where there's some more herbs. All right. So when I move my hand over this, you guys can see just a few white flies are starting to pop up. It's nothing drastic now, but it can be something drastic later if I let it continue to happen. So what I want to do is I want to get a lot of this. This is my sweet marjoram. I want to get a lot of it dehydrated. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it all the way down to its last set of baby leaves that are coming in. So for instance, on this one, I would cut it back to about here. This is going to give this plant a really big chop and it's going to allow for there to be room for other things to grow. My parsley is something that I'm trying to grow a year supply of parsley if you guys haven't seen already. And if you guys can see right there, that was a lace wing. So lace wings are typically bugs that eat like aphids and different things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and give everything a big haircut. We want to try and get some more oregano out of here. So we're going to give that a haircut and yeah, let's see what we can get. Now guys, I cut things all the way back. As you can see, it is down to like basically the, the root of it. <laughs> like all you have are just these little baby leaves that are coming in. And look, I found things like hedgy and some leeks that I forgot to plant. <laughs> now, I wish I had uh, bushed out my oregano a lot better, but I just ran out of time. So we're gonna have to make the most out of that. I did cut back just the tops of them, so it gives the next set of true leaves um, a chance to come through. We're gonna get the oregano, and then some of this thyme too, I'm probably gonna get dried, and then maybe some of that sage. All right, guys, and this is what it looks like. Now, I can see that something is digging in my garden. I don't know what it is, but we will find out now that we have some space <laughs> for it to look around. Now, I didn't take a lot of the sage. I'm slowly getting the sage to dry. And then also we use the sage medicinally just to make like a sage water too. So I like to have some fresh sage, but it's not going to survive the summer. So I want to make sure that I slowly start drying it and then get it completely um, taken back once the summer really starts to hit. Also the chives I've left pretty big because we like fresh chives. So I don't want to dry these and we're going to be eating a lot of baked potatoes. So on the grill, so we're going to have those 
And then the time, we use the time a lot to cook. So I just gave the time a haircut at the top on both because we use the time a lot for breakfast. All right, guys, we have our bucket already. That's just one bed and let's head on down to get some cilantro and the rest of the parsley. Okay, so my cilantro is already gone to flour, but I can still use the cilantro. It still has some, most of its flavor. So I'm gonna get that in the freezer or I might make a soup tonight. Um, and then I have this parsley that I'm gonna get all the way down to the new starts. And I also have some cilantro over here that I'm going to be completely harvesting all the cilantro. And then the dill is starting to go to flour. I do wanna try and save some for the butterflies. I've yet to get butterflies, but I am getting a little bit of aphids on the dill. So I am going to give that a big haircut. Now guys, everybody always says, plant dill for the butterflies, plant dill for the butterflies. I've yet to get a monarch butterfly <laughs> and I have planted lots of dill. Granted, I'm in the desert, I get it, but I have gotten some really beautiful moths lately that have been attracted to my dying pea plant. So those have been really pretty, but still have yet to get a monarch butterfly. Maybe this will be the year that it happens. Now guys, this is my cilantro plant, which smells absolutely amazing. And I could let this go to seed. If I let this go to seed, completely dry out, that would give me coriander. Well, what we call coriander here in the U.S., I think everywhere else just calls the whole thing coriander, but we call the plant cilantro and then the seeds coriander. When it goes to seeds, then you can use that coriander for seasonings, but I don't use a lot of coriander. I prefer the cilantro. So I let my cilantro get as big as possible. I let it go ahead, bush out, do whatever it's going to do, and I harvest it before it starts to attract bugs. When it starts to attract bugs, that's when it's going to die back and that's when you can have a better chance at collecting all of the seeds and getting yourself coriander if that's what you're going for. But this is how I like it. And look at that guys. That is a nice big giant bucket full of flavor. So guys, nothing makes me happier than having this like giant bucket just full of flavor and seasonings. And I think that a lot of people forget to plant something to flavor their food. And if you think about it, some people will grow amazing organic gardens where you don't put a drop of a pesticide on anything. And then you will take all of that into your home with your grass fed beef and all the things that you know, you hand raised or you really sought out for good ingredients and all that and then you sprinkled bottled seasoning on it and those bottled seasonings have all of these different things in them that can cause all these different side effects within your body and your body not to work properly so my thing is that everybody should grow their own herbs because your herbs not only are going to give you all the medicinal values of them and if you're eating the herbs regularly it's going to allow your body to have that that medicinal medicine regularly and to be healthy and to stay healed and it's also going to provide you some of the best flavors for your food so you don't need all of these bottled seasonings that are just filled with like MSG you don't need that you can make them your own so I have this big bucket of herbs which I'm so excited about and this week I'm going to be showing you guys how I preserve them and kind of what I'm using them for. So I have some bone broth that I'm going to be making. I have, I think I might pickle something with the dill. I'm also going to make some dill butter because we need some more of that in the freezer. Um, putting up the parsley, putting up the cilantro. Let's just go through it and let's make better choices when it comes to flavoring our food. So I hope that this little harvest video was fun for you guys, and I hope that you are growing your own bucket of flavor. But until next time, grow yourselves a garden, because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Oh, these flies are terrible. <laughs>